Let's go ahead and begin by importing an STL file that we are going to convert into a solid and then extract some 2D outlines from it. And I'll go to File, Import, and we will select the STL. And then the units of this file is inches. And then we'll click OK and select our STL file. Now I noticed on viewing the file, it uh, looks like it was created in the XZ plane. I like to work with top in the XY. So I'm going to use a utility that just rotates the Y and the Z axis. And we'll select it. It's called Chain Scale. Chain Scale is, is a neat tool in that if you have a file that was in millimeters and you want to convert it to inches, you can use this quick scale operation. It's also nice too, it tells you the, uh, it'll tell you what the model width and length and height are. And we are going to select this last option, transform Y as up. And you'll see our model switches. Something that I also I'll do uh, is, let's go ahead and put our model on the Z equals zero plane. And there's a handy tool in the 3D print tools palette that will let us do that. And that is the position and align from facet option. What this does is uh, it takes the selected facet and it transforms it into the y equals zero uh, plane. All right, now we have the part at z equals zero and in the xy plane. Next, since it's a uh, STL file, a mesh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a mesh analysis on it kind of see what we have so far. And the mesh analysis will tell us things such as it's uh, whether it's quads, triangles, uh, does it have any issues? And in this case we can see uh, there are actually 21 different parts in it. So I am going to use the Power Pack Mesh Tools Separate All Parts tool. And what this will do is it'll take each mesh object that forms a closed connected shape and puts them uh, as a separate mesh. And something that I um, like to do too is, is I'm going to change all of the colors. I'll use the assorted uh, colors options in Power Pack. And it just lets me visualize the different parts. Okay. Let's go ahead and begin converting these parts over into solids. And let's zoom up on the W first of all. And we'll go to the Power Pack Mesh, Mesh to Analytic tool for this. And I'm just going to use all the default options. And we'll just go ahead and select our mesh. And it'll convert it into a solid. In this case, it's converted the part into, looks like an extrude shape. And I think it looks it looks like it converted into straight lines and arcs for this case. All right, let's zoom up on the end now. We'll do the same thing. And we'll convert the E next. And then last, the S. Now, one of the options that you have when you convert uh, to a solid is you can control whether is composed of lines, circles, and splines. And if I zoom up and right click on this edge, we can see it actually made it an arc. And what I'm going to do is I want to have one continuous edge. And I'm going to undo that and go back to the mesh to analytic tool. And this time I'm going to turn the circles to zero, hit apply, and now select the shape. And now we made one continuous spline throughout it. Okay, let's do the center piece now. And let's put our circles back to our default value, 5, hit apply, and do the big shape in the center. And next we'll go ahead and tackle some of the lettering. Let's zoom in, for example, on the letter D and select it to convert into a solid. And then we'll go around and we'll select all of these. And I'm going to jump ahead and show you the finished conversion. 
And once we have our solid model, you can then do solid modeling operations or share the data precisely through STEP, SAT, or IGIS. Let's zoom up on this E, for example, and put a chamfer on the edges. And let's go ahead and put a value in for the chamfer. And let's select the face. And you see that once STL file is now a nice, nice solid that you can do uh, solid modeling operations. Next, what we like to do is take our, our model and get just the outlines or the 2D um, representation of this model. And to do that, I'm going to use the model sheet tool. And let's uh, select all of the uh, solids and go to the model to sheet tool. And we will um, we'll pick best fit. And we're going to use the polyline option. And we're picking uh, to create just a single top view. There's all kinds of templates that you can pick from. This is a single draw view in the top. And once it's complete making the view, it will place all of that into a layer for you. And uh, if we zoom up, we can see the result in shapes. And before we send it out to a a DXF or a DWG file, we're going to go ahead and take the draw view and we're going to flatten it. And that removes the draw view uh, from around the objects so that they're all part of the same uh, layer scale. And now you can also, if you want to do some geometry simplification with the mesh to analytic tool, uh, you the mesh to analytic tool will also convert uh, closed profiles into simplified ones. For example, if we look at uh, this, this circle here, it's actually a collection of line segments. Uh, that's because we use the polyline option in model to sheet. If you have Shark LT or Shark FX, this would be a circle. Now, if I would like to have this a circle, you can use the mesh to analytic the Mesh to Analytic tool will also let you simplify uh, collections of curves. For example, if, if you have many lines, it'll convert it into a polyline. Or if you have many lines, it'll convert it into a spline or a circle. So let's go ahead and select this. And it jumped a little bit. And it did that because of our tolerance. Let's lower our tolerance a little bit more and select it again. There we go. Yeah, let's do another one up on top. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and export this out to a DWG file. And let's get rid of our title block and this additional stuff. And now we're going to export this out and we're going to export it out as a DWG, and we're going to use version 12. Uh, version 12 uh, will convert all ACES solids, ACES surfaces, and any complex geometry into simpler geometry, such as lines, polylines, arcs, and splines. And we're going to save this out into our folder. And finally, we'll go ahead and take that DWG file that we just wrote out from ViaCAD and import it into a third-party application. In this example, we're going to read it into Aspire. We have a trial version that we want to inspect the 2D curves and the vectors that we just exported. Thank you very much.